Praise the Lord. I am glad to be back this Wednesday night. Had a great Easter. Yes. A monster candy rain. And I, I saw one of our church friends in Louisiana that had a candy rain. And they threw their candy off the roof. And it just one thing went off. And we came here and threw our candy rain out. And it was two big boxes of candy. And it took three men to throw it and get it out. And it was crazy. One of the boys, in fact, more than one of them, but one of them in particular, had a Walmart bag full of candy. He had so much he was giving it to the other kids. And uh, several of them, I don't think anybody went home with a half a bag unless that's all they wanted to pick up. Praise the Lord. But I'm glad that they had a great time, and we had a great time of fellowship, and the Spirit of God was beautiful. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord, and we thank Him for that. We want to go to Him and praise right now and uh, appreciation. We want Him to want to go to Him in prayer. We have several people that are not going to be able here to be here. Mike Burgess has a migraine headache and he has sinus problems, and uh, that's just to mention a couple of the physical problems he has. Uh, I want you to keep him in prayer. Also, um, Diane Stidham and uh, Diosis. Not able to be here. She's been to the hospital, been to the ER, and goes back in, I believe, this Friday. Um, we want to keep them in prayer. And Diane, uh, with her grandchildren, uh, Diane Mills, keep her in prayer, and all of her children and grandchildren. Stephen is not able to be here tonight. He's having uh, a lot of physical problems right now. We want to keep them in prayer. Also, we have people that we have known for years and uh, in the church, pastors of church that are great people, and uh, Satan trying to bring them down from the inside out, wants you to keep the church in prayer. Yes. Not just the church here, the church, not just the church in South Carolina, but I'm telling you right now, the, with the coming of the Lord being close, the time of the end being near, Satan is, is going around, and he's not as bad as he's going to be, but he's going around stirring up trouble, trying to cause anybody that can to fail. Praise the Lord. And we go against him in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the name Jesus and the authority of the word. And we command him to shut up, leave the church alone, back away. Let's go to the Lord right now in prayer. Mighty God, we love you. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence, for your unseen hand. We ask you, God, to move in the mighty name of Jesus tonight. We ask you, Lord, to have your divine way. God, touch them, Lord, that are sick tonight. Touch them, God, that are having a hospital problem. Touch them, God, that are not able for some reason or another. We ask you, God, to bless those that watch tonight, those that are here tonight. God, we ask you, Lord, pour out an abundance of blessings upon their life. God, upon their heart, Lord Jesus, supply their every need, oh God. Move upon them. Bless them, Lord, for their faithfulness tonight in the beautiful name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's worship him right now in spirit and in song. You were there when the earth was without form. When all was faith remained, you kept him shielded from the storm. You were there when Job fell to his knees. Your love shone through your grace to spade in his time of need.
midst of all my trials, the wounds and mine have been it by the power of your touch. And you were there. You died on Calvary's cross and gave your life so willingly, so we would not be lost.
Praise the Lord. He is the only God. There is no other. Praise the Lord. Let's worship him one more time. Hallelujah. like is fine. Uh, 
I like to bring my wife to church because I can boss her around here. She has to be obedient. I am her pastor. She is a very compassionate, loving woman. Praise the Lord. If you have a Bible, would turn to Genesis 6 and 5. Glad you could make it, Michaela. It's always good to see you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Genesis 6 and 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was on evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God, we love you and we adore you and we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, God, for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this service. And we thank you, God, for your hand right now. We ask you, Lord, for direction, for instruction. God, help us today to understand your word, Lord. Help us to be obedient. God, be faithful to you and be faithful to your word. In the beautiful name of Jesus, praise the Lord. God bless you, and you may be seated. I want to speak to you for a little while on the ark that God built. Does anyone know who built the ark? Anybody tell me who built the ark? Well, nobody's saying anything, so you, I can't hear you. Who built? Okay, nobody's saying anything. I guess everybody's shy here right now, but Noah built the ark. Yeah. Noah and his sons, and they may have had hired help, I don't know, but Noah and his sons drove the pegs through the wood. They... And, it, it didn't take but 100 years to build it. I mean, you know, uh, 100 years, you can, you can imagine. I mean, it wasn't really small. It was over three football fields long. It was 510 feet long. You think about that. That's three and a third football fields. Over three football fields long, it was 85 feet wide. That's twice, that's, that's you know, that's as wide as our yard is, or almost as wide as our yard and it was 54 feet tall, or 51 feet tall. So you could have five stories in there easy. And when you ask people, they begin to, I'm going to just get this out front before we get any deeper. If you've ever thought about the animals that were in the, the ark, I almost said in the nark, about the animals that were in the ark, if you've ever thought about it, and you consider that the animals that came out replenished the earth. And, uh, and everyone, I, I never thought about it really, but when you had an elephant go in, I, I'm pretty sure that it wasn't an adult elephant. It would just make more sense that if it was one that had just been weaned or just about to be weaned and uh, just a baby elephant. As, as with the dinosaurs and every other thing that was big and even young stuff. You know, they, God didn't take anything that was going to die before it got there, you know. So he took seven good and seven clean animals of each species and two unclean. And here's the thing about the flood. It has been figured out by some smart guy or people that there were seven billion people on the earth before the flood. I don't know, I wasn't there. But that's the number they came up with. There was no child prevention. So you can just imagine there were plenty of kids around. Plenty of people. But if there were 7 billion people, if that number is correct, even if there was a billion people, if that number is correct, consider this. Only one man found grace or favor with God. The world was sick. Uh -huh. It was sin sick. Uh -huh. They had so much sin, it was rampant, and they couldn't think of anything but evil. From the time they woke up in the morning till the time they got to, uh, went to bed, they got up in the morning, they probably dreamed of it. Oh, 
and only eight souls survived the flood. Did you know that Noah's grandpa died the year of the flood? Do you know who it was? Oh, my goodness. Who was the oldest man in the Bible? The Methuselah. And he died the year of the flood. And I heard one, read one source said it was 10 days before the flood. So there was no use in the Lord getting him to build an ark. He's already 969 years old. He's about to kick the bucket. So the Lord got a young man named Noah that was 500 years old. And he built an ark and it took him 100 years. Consider, boys, that the ark was not built out of toothpicks. It was built out of timber. And they probably used every source they could and every resource they could. And I figured up the, uh, I don't remember how much it was now, but I figured up today how many gallons of pitch it would have taken if it took a gallon would go 200 square feet. You know, I, I don't really remember right now, but it was <laughs> thousands of gallons of pitch. You know what pitch is? Somebody argued on there, and the people argued and said, oh, pitch wasn't, didn't come out with pitch until later on when asphalt came out. And, you know, and, but actually, pitch was from the pine tree. I remember when I was a boy, when I would get wood, the pine sap on my hands, and my dad would tell me, you know, building houses, you got that, that pitch on your hands. And that's what it is, pine sap and cedar sap, that's the pitch. And they covered it inside and out with pitch so they probably took a sheep and took him and used him you know putting the stuff on they, they took something like that a sheepskin or something to spread it with but there were seven billion people and out of seven billion people eight survived the flood you know what that tells me that tells me that numbers don't matter that's right God is not going to save a church because there's so many people. Oh, there's so many people. He, he didn't save them then. And this is the same God. He said, I change not. That's right. He said, I, I'm God. I'm Jehovah. I'm the Lord. And I change not. I don't change my ways. I don't change my anything for anybody. If you're going to be saved, you're going to have to be converted to the word of God and the ways of God. He was not going to change for, for a multitude or for numbers. Have you ever considered that the only thing that disobeys God? Listen, a donkey spoke. It obeyed God. It spoke. Uh -huh. It says, Balaam, why are you hitting me? Uh -huh. Why are you beating me? I've been your donkey all these years. Haven't I always done what you said? He saved Balaam's life. So if God has one thing that's disobedient or doesn't obey, or he has to beg, it's the one thing that he loves the most. It's man. The fish of the sea, they, they, they obey him. When the fish were without the, with the boat, you know, the apostles were there and they were casting the net over. And they didn't catch anything all night and they toiled, they worked and they brought the net in and out and they would go around in circles, they'd go and try and get fish in and they couldn't get any fish. But when Jesus came, he said, cast your net on the other side and they were probably like, well, you know, we've been here all night and we've done this, but this is the Lord speaking so we're going to cast it over by faith. And they cast the net over and when they brought it up, the net was about to break for the amount of big fish in it. Why? How did those fish get there? They obeyed God. Yeah. They obeyed the Lord. Yeah. They didn't have money for taxes. The Lord told the apostle, he said, go, to the, go down and uh, get the fish out of the, off the pier. Uh -huh. And he went down, he, he picked up the fish, the first fish he picked up. Had silver, had gold in his mouth. He had money in his mouth yeah. to pay taxes with. Why? Because the fish obeyed God. Yeah. He obeyed the Lord. Every time something happens and, and animals move, it's, it's not always because they're hungry. Sometimes they move because God instructs them. Yeah. Fowls in the air move by the grace of God. Men wake up and they walk by the grace of God. You breathe in and out by the grace of God. You found favor with God. 
Now you need to find favor in the Spirit of God and bring yourself under subjection yes. to the Word of God. Because the Word of man gets you in trouble. Yeah. Now they had gopher wood. And they said they don't really know what gopher wood is. They, you know, people try to describe it and they try to make guesses. Some people, I've heard say that it was a white, like white oak, you know, because it's, it's water resistant. It'll, it'll keep water away and it's strong. But then some say it was cedar or maybe, maybe cypress wood, you know, the, because it may have been plentiful around there. I don't know. All I know is that Noah obeyed the word of God, the voice of God. And when God told him what to do, he didn't argue, well, well Lord, look. This is a little bit easier to cut, and it's a lot lighter. Okay? And it doesn't burn. No, he didn't say that. He obeyed the Lord. He didn't say, well, now, Lord, that's a big boat. And there's only three men. There's only three of us. And uh, by the way, Lord, there's not a lake around here. <laughs> uh, there's no river. We're building it out in the middle of the woods. And, and I'm going to, but I'm going to obey you. But Lord, maybe if we just cut a couple hundred feet off of it, you know, and make it an even number. But he didn't. Nope. He simply obeyed the Lord. And what happened? He saved himself and his household. That's right. He saved his three sons so that, re that replenished the earth. Yeah. And his daughters and all those girls were so glad they married him, boys. Yeah. They probably hesitated a little bit, maybe at Seth, you know, or, you know, maybe... Different ones, Ham, Sham, Japheth. Maybe it, uh, Ham wasn't so good looking, you know. Maybe uh, didn't like him so much, but you know. But he's a nice guy, and it looks like he's making a good living. I'm going to go ahead and marry him anyway. Why was she ever glad? Was she ever glad? Because her parents perished in the flood. That's right. Her brothers and sisters perished in the flood. They made fun of Noah. They made fun and laughed and mocked. You know what happens today when somebody says, "I'm going to live without sin." Church people, people that attend churches, laugh and mock and make fun. My pat, my preacher on up, I'll put that on us. He don't make us do that. I just want to let you know something. Nobody makes me do anything. Try. Ask my wife. Nobody makes me do anything. I do it because I want to do it. And I want to be obedient to the word of God. So therefore I follow the word of God rather than the word of man when the word of man is different yeah. than the word of God. I've got to be obedient to the word of God. Did you notice that? Can anybody tell me this? You people know less about the ark than anybody I've ever seen. Can anybody tell me how many windows were in it? One. One window. 510 feet. 510 feet long. 85 feet wide. 51 feet high and there's one window uh -huh. in the whole ship. But can you tell me this? Doesn't that sound kind of familiar? John 14 and 6. Doesn't it sound kind of familiar? Who can read that for me? Can you read that, Lindsay? 6 through 9. Today. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? What did he say? He said, I'm the only one. Yeah. You don't have another one. That's right. That was the wrong verse, but that's okay. And that was my fault. John 8 and 12 says, Then spake Jesus again, saying unto them, I am the light of the world. Yeah. He that followeth me shall not walk in, walk in darkness, but shall have light, the light of life. We have one light. We have one Lord, and it's Jesus Christ. And I apologize for reading the wrong scripture. I got it, I've got it mixed up in my notes here, which happens every once in a while. One source of light in this world. And if you've got the Holy Ghost tonight, guess what? 
Matthew 5 and 14 said, you are the light of the world. Yes. That was Jesus. You're the light of the world. And the city of the hillside cannot be hid. Listen to me. If you, have, if you truly have the Holy Spirit inside of you, then you're a light. And you're supposed to be a light to the world. And you're not supposed to walk in darkness. Yeah. You're not supposed to walk in, and spread the darkness. You're supposed to spread the light of Jesus Christ. Yes. And he said, 16 said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The church is that ark. The church is the ark of the world today. Either get in the church or you're not going to heaven. But I, I want to be, I want to do everything else too. I want to enjoy myself and have fun. Evidently, you've never been in an apostolic church. We have fun. We love to have fun. We love to play games. We love to fellowship. We love to eat. We love to go fishing. We love to share things. We love to do things with people. And if you know us and you're not doing stuff with us, it's not my fault. It's your fault because you don't want to come. I want to give you a little word right here that's not even in my notes. It's not going to cost you a penny. Do you know you can survive on food eating two days a week do you know that you can survive yeah. you're going to be thin you're going to lose some of that baby fat or whatever you call it yeah. you're going to lose some weight yeah. you're going to lose some excess That's right. but did you know if you miss one of those days you don't get nearly as strong and if you miss a month without eating your stomach is, your belly button is eating a hole in your backbone. Yeah. It's the same way with the word of God. When you miss coming to the house of God, oh, I can read my Bible. You can fool anybody you want, but I'm going to tell you this. If you're reading your Bible and you're getting as much out of your, but just reading your Bible and staying home as you are going to the church you attend, then I change churches. I would change churches because when we come to the house of God, we have fellowship, we have fun, we have food sometimes. We, do, we come to praise God. We came to worship him because he's the king of kings. He's the savior of the world. He's the light of the world. I want the light in me. Now people have said, and I have one of my best friends a long time ago said this to me. He said, I, I just can't quite wrap just these few people. Just these few people. I, I just can't quite wrap a few people being saved. I just, I just can't wrap my head around it. It doesn't, you know. And uh, he needs to read Matthew 7 and 13. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, many, everybody say many, many. many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to eternal life. And few, everybody say few. Few, few there be that find it. Yes. What do you mean find it? I thought it was all over. You've got to look for the truth. You've got to seek the truth out. You've got to seek God out. Because there's so many false doctrines in this world. You've got Buddhism. You've got Hinduism. You've got Satanism. You've got carnalism. You've got everything. And somebody says, oh, we're all going. No, we're not all going to the same place. The Bible said, few that be that find it. There was only eight in the Old Testament the, before the flood. There was only eight. And, you know, you hear the song about the sainted millions. I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I want you to look how long God's been saving people in the Old Testament and the New I want you to look how old the church is. Yes. And I want you to look at the Old Testament church. Yes. People that came to God and served God. People that knew God. Yes. Entire family. Entire, entire generations. Yes. Yes. Came to God. And when their father would fail, the children would suffer. And they'd get back up. And they'd make their way back to God. If you fall away from God, you need to make your way back. Yes. The old saying is this. It's the straight and narrow. But anyway, the guy told me, he said... I just can't wrap that small amount around in my head. Hmm, you need to wrap, wrap the gospel around your head. Yeah. Instead of your thinking, your, your finite, your infinite thinking, and your infinite wisdom. I just can't quite. Well, God can. He wiped out an entire uh, population. Because they were evil. 
Now, now that you've said that, though, any of you that's ever said that, I'd like for you to do this for me. I'd like for you to think about the people that you know that are really, really, really good people. Okay? Really good people. Think of the amount you know compared to the amount that you know that are evil. Look at the news. How many good things do you read in the news? You don't see good news in, in, in good comments or anything in the news. Generally, you read of the perversion. Yeah. The seduction of Satan that tempts our children. Yeah. The lies, the torment, the hate, the anger, the, the murders, the killings, the rapes. Generation. And when people let their families grow up without correction, oh, you're meddling now. No, I'm not. I'm just talking to the people here. You just happen to hear it. That's good. Take it or leave it. But the people here that will accept it and they agree with me. Spoil, spare the rod, spoil the child. But Solomon said, beat your child with a rod. Surely he won't die. How would you like to have him for a daddy? Yeah. Man, he'd beat it out of you. He'll drive it far from you. Like you wish you'd never messed up. But now we see the people of the world saying you can do what you want, be what you want, it don't matter. God's just, God's just happy. You know what that sounds like? That makes God sound like a, a blithering moron going around with a double mind. But God is of a single heart and a single mind. Yes. He loves the people that love him and want yes. him. And he's more in love with them yes. than he is in the world. But he loves everybody. He wants you. It doesn't matter how you mess up. He says, come unto me. And here's the thing about the Bible. You ever, have you ever considered? I've seen stories, horror stories, how they would take the Bible and they would throw the books in the fire. The Bible is one of them. That, that's, that's really what Satan wanted to get rid of with the Bible. And they would burn thousands and thousands of them at a time trying to get rid of them. It's been burned. It's been torn to pieces. It's been destroyed in every way you can imagine. Men wanting it to say one thing and agree with what they wanted it to say. And I had parts that were added and parts were taken out. Yet by the hand of God, it miraculously may, remains intact and unchanged. That's right. That's right. Any other document, any other book would have never come back to its original form. But God has preserved his word until the end. That's right. And Satan has tried every possible way, everything in the world to try and do what he can to change our world, change and save our world. He's done everything he could to try and get rid of it so the world couldn't be saved. He's tried to get rid of God's infallible word because he knows that if you obey the word of God, then you can be saved. But if you disobey, then he knows you won't save. You know how he knows that? First-hand information. He stopped sinning. The old saying is the straight and narrow. And the reason they said the straight and narrow is because the, they were talking about a man. He's on the straight and narrow now. In other words, he quit sinning. He quit doing the things he used to do. Now he's a church boy. He's going to church. We're going to keep our eye on him. Just wait. He's going to fail. He'll, he'll backslide. They said that about me and they probably said it about you. When my wife and I got married, the words of her family were, well, they won't be married long. We didn't know that until about 35 or 40 years later. And uh, <clears throat> one of my wife's sweet nieces told her own mother that said it. Said, well, Mom, looks like you were wrong about that marriage not lasting long. <laughs> but we, we had a secret, though. One, we grew together in love. Yeah. And two, we, but mainly we grew to lo together in loving him. That's right. Jesus is the glue. That keeps our family together. That's right. And if your family's parted, your family's going every which way. Come on. Yeah. Let's let Jesus be the glue in your life instead of drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Let Jesus take over your life. Oh, let him yeah. raise you. Let him give you something to live for. Right. The straight does not mean straight as an arrow. I've got a bow out here that uh, a crossbow that I like to shoot. And David likes to go out and shoot. Now all my kids, the grandkids have all here that are, they've all shot it but and uh, daughter-in-law wife son everybody shot it but nobody seems to like it as much as David the youngest one and David went out and shot and he did something I haven't done he put he pulled 
he shot an arrow into another arrow. He wasted $50 of arrow in one and shot it into a $10 arrow, and now it's no good forever. But he practiced until he made it perfect. See, it's not that kind of straight that they're talking about, though. The bow shot straight. It's not that kind. It means hard. S-T-R-A-I-T. Straight. Hard. It's a hard straight. It's something that's hard to get into. It's hard to make it sometimes. And you're always going to have problems. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure. What treasure? The Holy Spirit of God. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. What earthen vessel? We're made of mud. We're a glorified ball of mud. We're made of dirt. When we die, it's going back to dirt. It's going back to dust. But right now, we've got the treasure of God inside of our body. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but yet not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but the devil can't destroy us. Because God's got this. God's got this. God built the ark. And all we have to do is get in it. He was writing about tribulations and troubles, and I thought earlier today I, was, I had seen this uh, thing on Facebook, and I sent it out to several people. Some of you watching may have received it, and I've read it several times in the past over the years about the way that all the apostles had died. And I sent it out, and my wife made mention to me. I sent it to her, and I sent it to uh, my son, one of my sons and his wife and sent it to a lot of friends and uh, you know and when you begin to read it and, uh, your heart will get heavy or mine does gets heavy when I read what they went through and all of the things you know that the filleted alive and you know uh, tortured, beheaded, stoned uh, James the brother of Jesus was thrown over the pinnacle on the temple the place that Satan took Jesus up to that same pinnacle, took him up to the same place. He was thrown over. He was cast down 100 feet. And when they got down there and he survived, when they got down there with, with clubs and they beat him to death. But I'm telling you right now, he went from earth to glory in a matter of seconds. And I'm telling you, if you want to do the same thing, you've got to live for God through thick and thin, troubles and trials. You're going to have them. He's writing about the troubles of the church and Paul was writing about the tribulations and things that we're going to go through and we do go through and some of these tribulations some of these troubles are hard sometimes we can't get over them without the grace of God without falling down on our knees and finding God and as long as you're in the church you shall have tribulation you shall have trouble maybe not every day but all along the way but you'll get roses not every day but all along the way because there's light in this world and the light in this world is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ in you Hallelujah. if it were not for this book if it were not for these books I'm telling you now we would be confused tempted, fail, and fall by the wayside because there are many pitfalls. Matthew 7 and 15, one of the biggest warnings that Jesus had, people seemingly don't pay attention. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing and inwardly are ravening wolves. False prophets... Men proclaiming that they're son of God with a message. I got a new message or it's not exactly like we used to think or it's not like the old people thought. No, it's exactly like the old people thought. It's not like you think. Looking so innocent, coming out on the inside, they're devouring the masses and they're carrying women away and they're carrying men away and they're, they're taking their money and they're, they're spending it on themselves and they buy jets and rockets and homes all over and they, they have gold and silver and they're, they're laid up for life with their money. But I'm telling you right now, in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, they're going to regret it because when the church is taken out, when Jesus comes, they're going to be left here with all their loot, oh, Jesus. with all their money looking so innocent but on the inside they're devouring the masses with such foolishness as unconditional eternal security doesn't matter what you do you're still going to be saved you're going to be okay we have men that, and women that go into prisons 
And when they go into these prisons, they take time, they teach them the Word of God. And they, after a certain amount of time, God will fill these people with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking out of the tongues. Lifelong criminals destined for prison for the rest of their life. God fills them with His Spirit. They baptize them in Jesus' name. And their life changes in prison. What they could have done had they come to God before they went. Unconditional security is once saved, always saved. You, you can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Matthew 7 and 16 said, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns and figs of thistles? The 17th verse, even a good tree brings forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. You know them by their fruits. You know what happens, you know what goes on, and yet you go and you say everything's going to be all right. And you've listened to somebody that's living like the devil, and you listen to people that uh, pile up their money. People sometimes that say, I love Jesus, and the stench of the world is not just on them from yesterday when they repented or from a few minutes ago when God filled them with His Spirit. But it's on them. They've been sitting on pews for years and the stench of the world is still there because they never came to God. They went to the altar, but they never went to Pentecost. Pentecost comes after the altar. Pentecost comes after Calvary. Yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah. If you go to, to, to Calvary and you don't go to Pentecost, you've done nothing but spin your wheels because that's not the new birth experience. That's forgiveness. The new birth experience started on the day of Pentecost Confusion and lies from Satan's pulpit of lies. All you have to do is be say, say, Jesus, forgive me. Come into my heart. That's not the way it was in the Bible. It's not the way it is today. Demas preached with Paul, followed Paul, went on missionary journeys with Paul. But Paul said, Demas have forsaken me, loving this present world. All he was saved, no. Don't talk like a fool. He walked away from the Spirit of God. He walked away from the truth. No, he just walked away from Paul. Go ahead and speak like a fool and keep believing like a fool. You'll find out the hard way when you see Demas. He walked away from God. Oh, you're judging. I'm just reading what the Word says. Be absolutely sure. Be absolutely sure. That your salvation came from the written word of God, not from the imagination of men. Stand with me. Some men wrote things well meaning, didn't understand the word, but they wrote something that was, or preached something that was given by a man that was not a man of God. Go ahead. I've got to make sure that I'm traveling the right road. And I refuse to walk away from God. And I refuse to walk away from the way that I've traveled for 49 years. I've made mistakes. I've been knocked down. I've been dragged in the mud. And all on my account, I did it myself. Nobody did it to me. But you know what happened? I got back to God. I went back to God. And He forgave me. And He picked me back up. Turn it up, buddy. I'd run out of paper if I sang about you have the opportunity. Mercy. The gate is still straight, but it's still hard sometimes. And the way is still There's narrow. That leads to eternal life. To Proverbs 20, 23 and 23 Your says, splendor. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction the and understanding. Buy this truth. Make sure you're buying the truth. No amount of money, no amount of popularity or fame can buy the truth. The only thing that can buy the truth is the honest heart.
a hungry heart and then sell out. Sell out to the world. Sell it out. Get rid of it and walk with God. Keep the pearl of great price. Regardless of the price. Regardless of who you have to get away from. Regardless of what you've got to give. Be a Zacchaeus. Don't be a rich young ruler. Jesus. You want to pray, it's the time to pray. Those of you at home, if you need to pray, it's the time to pray. You have an opportunity tonight. You have an invitation from the Word of God to come. Come. All you do, heavy laden, you're burdened down with problems. You don't have the money to pay your rent. You don't have the money for gas to go to work, so you walk to work. You don't have the money to buy food. And even though you get government assistance, they cut it down to hardly anything. You have an opportunity to be rich. You have an opportunity tonight. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Pour out your love. Let it overwhelm me. Let it overflow. Just yeah.